Hi, I'm Benjamin, and I'm a genetics and entomology major at Texas A&M University, and I'm here to present my project from the class Health 236. So from module 13, it, it included the topic of strategies for eliminating health disparities. And the, the, basically the whole module was revolving around healthcare reform strategies to eliminate these disparities that we find in everyday life in different communities. And these strategies include things like diversifying the work, work workplace, also changing governmental policies, and also conducting research. And so the most fascinating topic I found was the Healthy People Initiative. Now, this is an initiative that provides science-based national goals and objectives with 10-year targets that are aimed at health promotion nationally and also disease prevention. And so every 10 years, they develop new objectives to help people promote health. And so the first trial was ran in 1990, and that was called the Healthy People 2000. And then there was also the Healthy People 2010, which started in 2000. And so when the year 2000 hit, that's when they started the Healthy People 2020. And so now that we're in 2020, there's the Healthy People 2030 that is currently ongoing. And going further into the Healthy People reports, I saw that their objectives usually were tied to substance abuse, family planning, mental and health disorders, cancers, STDs, etc. And these are just common things that people go through in their lives or they know someone who's experienced some of these things. And the Healthy People Initiative, if their objectives are met periodically over the 10 year periods, can benefit and surely help improve a lot of people's lives. And I, I noticed, I found that the Healthy People 2020 included genomics. And that was not found in the Healthy People 2010, and it was not found in Healthy People 2000. So Healthy People 2020, they started to include genomics, and that's very, very interesting. And what I found that they did with genomics was that they had women 18 and older who, I guess, had family member, had family members who uh, experienced ovarian or breast cancer or were at risk for these things, and they had them go see genetic counselors. And these genetic counselors were to tell them if they were at risk for these different cancers. And they were already, and from the results, they reached their objectives. They went from 34% in 2005 all the way to 52.9% in 2010. And that was a huge jump in the amount of women that were going to get genetic counseling made me ask the question, how much of a role does genetics play in health disparities? I wonder this because there are many genes in the human genome, some of which we know the function of, some of which we don't know the function of, and that just leaves a whole enigma that needs to be, I guess, elucidated through research. I also wonder how much of a role does genetics play as there are many bacteria that live on us or within us that may or may not contribute to our health. These bacteria have genes that lead to, I guess, proteins or other tools that are gonna, may or may not affect your body, you know, affect your overall health and your metabolism and all these other different things. And so after reviewing literature, I saw that genomics plays a role in nine of the leading, 10 leading causes of death, which include heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes, Alzheimer's, and these are all things that people, you know, go through, whether they know somebody or it happened to them themselves or maybe one of their family members. And that's very, very interesting as genomics becomes more and more of a bigger aspect in society. Second, I also found that the microorganisms living within us have an intimate relationship with health and disease of humans. And I also found studies that linked these microorganisms to affecting people's moods and maybe it links them towards depression or obesities or autoimmune diseases and liver diseases and it makes sense since bacteria are so intimately related within us.
and they have such a close relationship with their metabolism. And so with that being said, um, due to the, the time limit that's placed on me, I would love to go deeper into the uh, genetics and the aspects of the Healthy People Initiative, but I cannot do so. But I can drop a second video if I get enough likes on this video. So thank you for your time. And with that being said, please support the Healthy People Initiative as their cause and their job in society is obviously doing really well. And so thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Bye. Before signing off, I would like to show my sources that I use for this presentation. And they're mostly from the CDC and also the Healthy People Initiative. Thank you.